Hey, welcome to this free YouTube masterclass. I'm super excited about this session because I'm going to be breaking down five tips you can apply immediately that may seem a little bit simple, even boring, but I guarantee that they will help you get views. You know, maybe one of your goals is to someday get a silver play button. Using the strategy we're going to talk about in this session is help me get three silver play buttons, a gold play button. And a lot of people aren't talking about this. And so there's been changes on YouTube, some new things you need to know. And so I want to encourage you, it's going to be a powerful session. And maybe your goal is to get your first or next 1,000 subscribers. This strategy, I actually guarantee will work. And the cool thing is you don't have to be like a video editing expert. You don't have to have any kind of crazy level of talent or charisma. You don't need any fancy gear or even experience to do this. It might sound kind of crazy, but again, there's sometimes the simplest things can get us the best results on YouTube. And we're going to be talking about five simple but powerful YouTube tips for getting views and growing to a thousand subscribers and beyond. Now, today's session is brought to you by streamwiththink.com. I'll get back to that in a little bit and tell you more about uh, them. Uh, but this is a strategy that I've been using, like I mentioned, to grow multiple different channels. As you can see, a couple of different sil silver play buttons, a gold play button. And if we're just meeting and you're wondering, hey, do you, you, know, do you have any YouTube experience besides that? Um, I also wrote a book called YouTube Secrets. The second edition is out now. And this is why a lot of people call me the YouTube guy. Nice to meet you if we're just meeting. My name is Sean Cannell, your guide to building a profitable YouTube channel. But let's talk about today's session. We're gonna be covering some new stats that you need to know for 2024, like what's happening on YouTube right now, a cool tool for discovering the exact videos that will get views, how I earned over $37,000 from one YouTube video using the simple strategy we're gonna be covering, and how to reach your goals faster on YouTube this year. In fact, that's towards the end, probably the most important part, because uh, we've kind of learned that YouTube is partly the tactics, but there's really something that the top creators know and do that is the foundation of their success. And so stick around until the end, and I'll be sharing that. Now, if you're also on um, Instagram, we're doing a five-day challenge right now. And if you tag official think media and use the hashtag grow with video and do a profile post, maybe do a selfie or we call this your battle station, right? This place where you film or take notes or create content. We're actually giving away 20 copies of my book, YouTube secrets. The second edition we will mail this to 20 random lucky winners, uh, to enter to, to do that. Um, just go to, uh, tag us on Instagram. There's the information on screen, but let's answer this question. Is it too late to start YouTube in 2024? And let's talk about it because right now there's been a lot of changes on YouTube. Maybe you've kind of felt that. Uh, it seems like there's rising competition. It seems like the algorithm shifting, shorts have kind of disrupted things. And people are wondering like, man, can you still break through? Can you still start a new channel? Well, here's what the actual data says, not just emotions or opinions, but here's what the data says. Right now, there's 2.7 billion monthly active users on YouTube. Number one, that's a third of the world's population, basically. Number two, it's like half of the internet as far as like active internet users. And number three, I think when we talk about is YouTube saturated or is it too late, it's really a supply and demand question. And here's why, based on the dictionary definition of like saturation, YouTube, it's not too crowded is because the audience on YouTube continues to expand. Like the actual amount of people coming on, watching content, the demand for content right now exceeds supply. Now, someday that could change, but really we're living through a wave right now where not only are more people watching YouTube than ever before, and they're watching more content than ever before, like the amount of minutes per day, there's a massive, massive audience. And I think one of the biggest myths is, is you think you see a big creator or you see some of the celebrity creators, let's just take like somebody like Mr. Beast, even though he's massive and he has a couple hundred million subscribers, did you know there's still people who never watch his videos and have never heard of him? Did you know there's some people who just don't even care for that kind of content? I think the mistake people make is we get into our little bubbles not realizing that 2.7 billion monthly active users, do you know how many sub niches and sub topics and sub interest groups are inside of that many people? And during this five-day challenge, we're going to be talking about you don't need a huge audience to make a full-time living on YouTube. 
I'm looking at the wrong camera. You don't need a massive subscriber base. And so inside of that 2.7 million, this is what the strategy is really billion, I should say. Inside of this, you just got to find your crew, your group, your people. And we're going to be talking about how to do that. And what we're seeing with the data is the demand for good content is skyrocketing. We're also seeing that there's a massive international opportunity on YouTube. YouTube's localized in more than 100 countries and is available in over 80 languages. So if you have a non-English speaking channel, I just did coaching with somebody the other day who is like a faith-based content creator and is now starting a second channel and is speaking Portuguese. And he's just been talking about how his channel has been blowing up and it's taken time it's he's built up over a couple months and even years but now he actually has over a million subscribers and here's the point like he's a non-english speaking channel so there's massive opportunity if you're based in the us and you speak english but there's also massive opportunity for non-english speaking channels and channels all around the world wherever you live in whatever country you live in now to build to all Tube filter also revealed that 200 million people are earning money from digital content creation. And this is like actually exactly about a year old study now, two years old, I should say. So this number just continued to go up, but doing the math, here's the point. The people are making internet money and millions of people are making inter internet money, like for real, hundreds of millions. And so that the financial opportunity on YouTube continues to expand. And here's some additional data that really supports that. Yahoo Finance revealed that the creator economy is the fastest growing segment of small business. This is crazy. The creator economy is the fastest growing segment of small business. I mean, imagine you try to start a business. Like, what are the best side hustles in 2024? What are the best businesses to start in 2024? Like, when my was growing up, my mom was always getting into, like, these different business uh, opportunities. Like, one, she was selling these magnets. This company was called Nikan. Uh, another one, you know, it's kind of like these different network marketing companies and whatnot. But she was, like, trying to start a business, you know, and, like, make some side money. Uh, of course, you, there's all kinds of different things you could do. But here's what's wild is Yahoo Finance is like, listen, jumping into the creator economy, setting up a battle station, getting your home office dialed, a little corner in your garage, getting your smartphone, getting some accessories for it, becoming a creator is the fastest growing small business type. <sighs> but this is where it gets really crazy because if, as if that wasn't crazy enough, Goldman Sachs research, Goldman Sachs like economists, big investment firm, Wall Street. They're analyzing what's called the creator economy, right? These individuals like you and I that are like, hey, how do I go full-time on YouTube? Like, how do I create start a creator business and make a living from this? They said this, that the creator economy could reach a half a trillion dollars by 2027. It's 2024 right now. That means in the next three years, this is essentially what they said, the creator economy is gonna double in the next three years. In other words, the next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy. Now, again, there's all kinds of videos and theories, and I'm not saying there's not challenges. I'm not saying there's not things to overcome. In fact, I want to emphasize those. For sure, there's rising competition, and you have to figure out how can I be different? How do I cut through the noise? What are the best strategies? How do I learn new skills? But I think just look at the wave of growth. Warren Buffett said, if you're going to be paddling a boat, you might as well be paddling with the current. And so it's like the current, there's a massive wave in the next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy. So as far as what the data says in regards to like the opportunity in 2024, YouTube is healthy, growing, and it's the most profitable platform to establish your brand. And honestly, um, this is one of the reasons why I'm super proud of our students and seeing students that have like watched a challenge that we've done or subscribed to Think Media or join one of our courses um, and not just started a few years ago, but there's students that have started in like the last year that have broke through the seemingly it's too late conversation using the strategy we're actually about to talk about. And eventually, I mean, got a lot more than a thousand subscribers, got the silver play button, even a gold play button. And uh, we have this private group where they just continue to share their stories and it's pretty wild. But here, let me tell you one story to illustrate this. So Marco has a channel called Just Dream Italy. And he's an international property hunter and promoter. Promoter. So what he does is he explores Italy to find dream home, um, dream homes. And so from publishing his first video, listen to this. 
From publishing his first video, it took him nine days to reach a thousand subscribers. So we're actually doing this five day YouTube challenge and that's remarkable results. Let me be clear. What you're going to learn during the five day YouTube challenge, depending on how fast you execute, maybe you could, by the end of the challenge, get a thousand subscribers, but maybe it takes a month. Maybe it takes a couple months. It depends on how much time you have, maybe season of life, kids, you got to consider all this different stuff. But just to illustrate that in like the recent era, I want to say like in less, definitely less than two years, in the last 14 months or something was when Marco started. The, this current era of YouTube, he started nine days, he reached a thousand subscribers, but then 15 days total to get monetized. And his first video was posted, I actually wrote it down, about nine months ago. So this is his channel, Just Stream it Italy. And he actually shared some tips that I wrote down over here. He said, um, here's a couple of tips. The first few videos will make you feel uncomfortable, but you got to push through it. Be confident in yourself and in your vision. If you're inspired to make it, others will be inspired to watch it. He said, invest in yourself. Um, the better you are with the tools and the tips and the strategies. That's why I want to thank you for being subscribed or being a part of this challenge because people who don't really invest, I think, in learning the skills and just go out there kind of guns blazing without an actual plan and without a strategy. In fact, one of the things that Marco did was he was a part of our program VRA and he actually took a lot of times a lot of time to study cultivate a plan develop a clear strategy learn some skills a part of the information we're going to talk about in just a second so that he wasn't just taking a lot of frantic action on YouTube but he had a clear plan of attack he had a clear strategy and so again, it's not too late to start. You have stories like Marco and we have countless stories like this and people that are starting in today's era. So here's the question we wanna answer today. What is the fastest and most predictable way to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube? I'm gonna give you the overarching strategy and then I'm gonna share five tips breaking it down with a lot of practical nuggets that you can apply immediately and I guarantee they're gonna get you views. Here's the first strategy out of our five-day challenge. The fastest way to create predictable growth on YouTube is to make clear and concise videos that answer specific questions. Now, this might seem boring, but it works. And it's not just for when you're starting. This is what I have continually done and continue to do to this day to keep generating results on YouTube. Let's see it, hear it again. The fastest way to create predictable growth on YouTube is to make clear and concise videos that answer specific questions. Tip number one, smart creators research before they press record. Smart creators research before they press record. Before you run out and make a video or just think in your mind, like what video do I wanna make? Smart creators, they research for first. In just a second, I'm gonna share with you some tools that you can do that. And one really simple tool that is misunderstood by a lot of people and it's just so fast and easy to use but smart creators actually take some time to research before they press record what do people want to see what is the intersection of what i know about or even the videos i want to create but also what the audience wants let me illustrate this with a story so meet mary she's a former new yorker now living the simple life with her sweet husband in the texas hill country and she's a content creator she loves traditional cooking, bone broths, ferment, sourdough. She wanted to share her passion on YouTube and her vision, her dream was to show people how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, no matter where you live. But she started when she was 60 and she didn't know where to start. She didn't know how to do YouTube right. She didn't know how to make a video. She didn't even know what videos to make, but she followed our system. And this was one of the foundational strategies that we teach. And that helped her build her confidence and she started to create videos. And what she understood was that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. It's the second largest search engine in the world, meaning, think about the strategy. We create predictable growth by answering specific questions. So what questions are your target audience searching for? YouTube is a place where people are going to find answers to questions. And it's the only platform where when you make the right videos, answering the right questions, you actually can get crazy amounts of views. So for example, based on her passion, right at the intersection of her passion 
her background, the kind of content she wanted to make. She did some research. In doing so, she found a topic that she made a video about. The topic was how to make apple cider vinegar with the mother. Now, here's the video that she posted. And notice this video is four years old. But here's what's crazy. If you look closely, the video has almost a million views and it still gets views today. See, there's different types of videos you can make on YouTube. And while some people will say, well, you know, if you wanna grow really fast and go viral, like the way to do that is to get your videos suggested by the YouTube algorithm, which you could call suggested traffic. Hey, that's good. In fact, we're gonna be covering that over the next four sessions over during this YouTube challenge. But in my opinion, the foundational way for most people to get started, if they don't have a huge budget or some kind of team, I mean, there's, you gotta be careful because sometimes the advice that gurus are sharing is not a like it's not applicable to the season you're in. So I wanna share with you something with my background of like working by myself, doing everything, shooting, editing, working after I got off my nine to five job, hang out with the wife a little bit and then, and then start editing videos and making practical videos that were search-based, that I guarantee will get you views, that you can make if you just have a smartphone. And, and so search-based traffic, this is exact, somebody searches for this, and then her video shows up, it can get you guaranteed views, but potentially a lot over time. And so four years later, her video is still getting views. So what Mary did was she created a video answering a specific question that people were actively searching for. Now, again, some of this might seem boring or overly simple, but I can't encourage you enough that these are very profound things. And one of the key words on the screen here is actively. You're not just even going to find some general question. You're not just making an answer specific questions type video that you're like, there's like one person in the world that's searching for this. Surprisingly enough, a lot of people are looking for how to do apple cider vinegar from home with the mother right? The little slimy yeast thing that grows in there and ferments and makes apple cider vinegar. I happen to be a personal fan, although I would never try to make it myself. I feel like I would kill myself or something and like get really sick. But Mary created a video. I need to watch Mary's video, uh, answering a specific question that people were actively searching for. And by doing this over and over again, see this, this, this can help you get a few hundred views, get your next hundred subscribers, break that a thousand subscriber mark. But the compound effect of the ASQ videos, answer specific questions, ASQ. Over time, Mary started when she was 60. She just now at 65 crossed 1 million subscribers. Crazy, and YouTube sent her that gold play button now, of course. Um, she recently got a book deal with Random House to do a cookbook. And so we've learned this, YouTube is the best way to impact the world with your message and your content from wherever you are in the world. And Mary had a vision. That whether your kitchen was in a city apartment or a house in the suburbs or a farmhouse in the country, that anyone could join her in preserving traditional cooking skills and find the joy living as modern pioneers in the kitchen. And you two gave her that opportunity, but she was using this strategy of answering specific questions and focusing on search-based traffic at the start, at the start. And here's what's interesting. 70% of viewers use YouTube to help them solve a problem. So what video could you make that answers a specific question or solves a specific problem? And the key here is asking what questions is your ideal audience searching for on YouTube? This also assumes that you've been cl you're clear on who your ideal audience is. And as I mentioned, over this full five free, basically YouTube masterclasses during our challenge, We'll also help you hone in on that because it's it's important that you're not just answering random questions, you're answering actually specific questions for a specific audience. Okay, uh, tip number two, use tools to find awesome video ideas. So use tools to find awesome video ideas. There's different software tools, there's different websites, and we'll be covering some of those, but I just wanna share one tool with you in just a second, but let me give you a quick story to talk about how I kind of stumbled upon just this one tool that like 99% of people don't even know about, 
and it's free and it's so fast and easy to use. And this is kind of how I stumbled upon it. So my story of answering specific questions actually starts in a farm field. It kind of does actually. I, I grew up on six acres north of Seattle, Arlington, Washington. Um, you know, I'll never forget because uh, growing up at Arlington High School, everyone wore uh, Carhartt clothes, but not because they were like cool today from like hipsters and big cities, but because they were actually farmers that worked outdoors. Like Future Farmers of America was like lit at my high school. It was a whole thing. And growing up, I kind of always felt like I didn't fit in because I was a farm boy who liked rap and punk rock and import cars and snowboarding. Um, but there's there's young Sean. And eventually I got into video and um, was doing some video production stuff for like back. You can see this technology is like super antiquated. That was a Canon HV30 with mini DV tapes. I started doing video at my church as an intern at a small town church and making videos for the youth group. And the first YouTube channel I started was in 2007. 2007, I've been doing YouTube for 17 years. <laughs> these early videos though, these were really, really bad videos. Um, and and in these days, YouTube had time limits, like 15 minute time limits, no custom thumbnails. There wasn't a YouTube partner program. It's been wild to see all the different eras of YouTube. So I've been doing video production for about 20 years, YouTube for about 17 years. And I want to kind of illustrate how after from 2003, basically to 2010, I'd been getting experience doing video for my local church. And I eventually turned that into um, some videos that I posted on YouTube. But as we get there to show how powerful this simple strategy can be, let me just play a clip of my first video so you could see where I, where I started. Because it's like when I first, this is embarrassing. Let me just play this for you. All right. So uh, this is, I guess, the first Sean Thanks vlog. And uh, I'm going to try to vlog every single day, um, mainly so I can remember what I'm even doing um, and what's going on, because I just feel like I have a lot that I'm thinking about. And I figured, hey, why not share it? And if you find something interesting, that's awesome. Now, this is definitely uh, as real as it gets. So I'm not going to try to be energetic or entertaining, um, though maybe sometimes I will. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I mean, you can see how bad that video was. And um, if there's hope for me, there's hope for you because that video couldn't have been worse. And by the way, as far on the topic of planning, that video is a good example of what not to do on YouTube. Like as I went in, I'm like, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I have I've not made a plan. Uh, imagine me like pitching this to somebody like here's actually a really practical tip for growing your YouTube channel is you should develop an elevator pitch. You should be able to concisely and quickly articulate why somebody should subscribe to your channel. And it should be a, a reason that would give value to the viewer. But just let's look at the elevator pitch I started with. It's like, hey, so um, here's what I can promise you. My content is not going to be um, entertaining. I'm not going to put any energy into this. Um, I'm not going to plan anything out. Um, and I don't even know what I'm doing. So hit subscribe. Can you like there's you can really expect some value, like, you know, so clearly uh, like that's the anti strategy. Like if you just do the opposite of what I did in my first video, you're going to grow a lot faster. And so um, ultimately, uh, we all got to start somewhere. And 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 just practically, there's actually a couple lessons that I learned from this. Um, it really two insights I discovered about success on YouTube. You do have to start before you're ready. So when it comes to like learning strategies and all that stuff, cool. And we'll help you do that. But you do have to start messy. You got to punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism in the face and press record. You got to start before you're ready. But I also learned you got to commit to learning new skills. Because if I would have stayed where I was at with that first video, I would have stayed stuck and we wouldn't even be talking right now. Like you wouldn't be on this challenge or on Think Media right now. I had to say, okay, I started messy but I stuck with continuous learning, continuous study, continuous leveling up my skills. Like my habit and routine and patterns has been to invest in myself, to practice, to buy books, to buy courses, to listen to podcasts, and to continue to get better and learn new skills. Because as I applied those, that's where even back then, that's where I stumbled on this strategy. It was by starting to study search engine optimization in general, starting to study and learning how the internet works, starting to watch a training just like this. And it, there was no YouTube trainings, but I started to apply what, 
like existed related to Google or just how the internet works. And I was like, oh man, that's how YouTube works as well. You just kind of got to adapt it. And that's where I stumbled over the ASQ strategy. And so um, I actually worked at a burger restaurant called Red Robin for 10 years from 17 to 27. And so during that time uh, with my job, uh, I was also volunteering at a church, newly married and um, were waiting tables at Red Robin. And at first I was the busser and then the host and then the expo. I was even the bird. They have a giant mascot bird with like yellow tights. It was, um, I actually should have got a picture. I don't know. They're, you wouldn't know it was me because I was wearing a giant mascot mask, but it doesn't matter. So actually what you could see here is this video on screen is 12 years old. And I want to illustrate this simple strategy and just show you how practical this can be. So Notice, I was actually filming this video on the way to work. I mounted my camera, my phone, on my dashboard. That's not recommended. Disclaimer, uh, you know, entertainment purpose is only. But it was it was like a GPS, essentially. I was like, like talking as if I was on the phone. Eyes on the road, as you can see. Um, notice the shot composition, too. Like, that is not a good shot. Like, it's mostly window and, and Ford Taurus roof versus you know, me in the corner of the screen. Like imagine if I did this entire training, like here's, and I was just here the whole time, like, all right, welcome to this YouTube strategy. Um, that's not good shot composition, like whatever. Anyways, what's the point? So you could see though, this is the big key. What is the video about? The video was titled how to get started in video production and video editing. Now in, in 2010, when I posted this, I'd been doing video production and video editing for seven years. But the tool that I used, and this is what I want to show you, was just the YouTube search bar, okay? So how to get started in video editing was um, the topic of the video. But let me show you this. See, a lot of people don't realize that when you go to the YouTube search bar, what does it do? It can actually, um, it completes your sentence. Call it autocomplete where if you go to Google or you go to YouTube, right, and you start topping, typing, it auto predicts or auto completes your sentence because it's what other people are searching for. So watch. So if I come here and I type in how, how to get started in video editing, let's look at what happens, okay? So not only does it finish my sentence, but it gives me an entire list of predictions. And here's some facts you need to know about these. The predictions at the top, the recommendations at the top are the most searched on YouTube. So what people out of this particular sentence, what people want most is how to get started in videography. They then next want to know how to get started with video editing. Then you niche down sports videography, wedding videography, real estate videography. Oh, shoot. I, I don't know if you already saw, if, if a light bulb hasn't already clicked yet, we're about to, uh, I mean, we're, you're talking about how do we find specific video ideas that people want to watch. And in a 2024 world, you're trying to break out. People are making general content. Your goal is to make some specific content. How do I get started as a freelance video editor? So all of these are ideas, and then these become the specific questions you should answer when starting out on your channel. But here's what's kind of crazy about this, is you could also type in like video editing, and you could put a space after, and you could type the letter A, video editing apps, apps for iPhone. You could go video editing B, basics, best app, background, business, video editing C, course, cap cut, course for beginners. All right. Now, what you could also do is go before you put an underscore space. It's going to put a word before there. CapCut video editing, KindMaster video editing. Mm. Then you could go A, and you're having words before the phrase of AI tools for video editing. Adobe Premiere video editing tutorial. Again, put whatever letter you want there and work through. Memes for video editing, no copyright. And what are we seeing here? Remember, the tip is that smart creators research before they press record and they use tools. Now, here's what's wild, is this is literally only one tool. Like we go deep in about 10, 20 different tools. And again, the better the tools, the better technology. Like if you're gonna build a house, it's gonna be hard to put the nails in with just your fist. So you want good tools. You want a hammer, you want a nail gun. Well, ultimately on YouTube, 
that's why we also recommend tools and the point of our channel, Think Media. But I, let me know if you're seeing how valuable this is and smash the like button. Because again, what I ultimately did back then, and this still works today, as good as it ever has, was I researched before I press record. And the one tool I'm talking about here is literally just the search bar. There's, there's about seven or eight different ways you can use it in angles. I put the underscore and the letters before and after. But again, what you're doing is you're looking for insights and verifying interest in a video topic before. So even though these early videos were shot on my Droid X, shout out to early phones, right? And even though the shot composition was horrible, shout out to you know being like in the absolute corner. Like, is this a good angle? Hey, good to see you. you know? Shout out to just starting with what you have, starting messy, starting before you're ready and leveling up your skills. But I started to, the key was I was making the right videos, right? I was finding out. So I did a video editing PCs tip. And, and by the way, this video again was shot in my car on my way to work. I understand that we should raise video production over time, meaning like make your videos better. And in that these could have been a lot better than they were. But the bottom line was they were shot messy. They were shot, I just got them done, but the information was good. And I was basing it on something I had experience in, right? And so people found it valuable. I mean, to the point of like 11,000 views, right? I mean, again, the point was to improve even from here. But why do these videos do good? How to record Skype interviews. Before StreamYard existed, before Zoom and everything else, early days, it was like, man, how, how do you actually do like a video podcast? Before the word video podcast existed, and I got 22,000 views. Um, this particular video was let's take it outside of like being super meta mean mean that i'm a video expert right i also have a channel where i do a lot of experiments and one was called best greens powder so you want to apply this to like health right you could go like best green juice recipe powder drink in the morning for glowing skin for weight loss for diabetics for detox hello <laughs> I get excited about this stuff because what's shocking to me is so many people who start channels and they get frustrated, they'll make 10 videos, 30 videos, 50 videos, and I'll review their videos. I'll be like, I wouldn't have made 49 of those. Like your actual topics, you need to research before you press record. Like what, what do you, forgive me, I get, I get fired up, but I, I'm excited about this and, and let me know if you're getting value out of this video and if you have any aha moments so far. By the way, uh, we'll talk on Friday of the challenge on the fifth session, how like different ways to make money and the six best ways to make money on YouTube in 2024 and how to attach all of these strategies together. But it might shock you, this video has earned over $20,000, this one video. This one video, using this strategy and then putting all the pieces in order has earned over $20,000 single-handedly. Haters are like, no, you're making that up. It only has 186,000 views. There's no way you'd make that much ad revenue. That's because it's not only ad revenue. The funny thing about haters is I always see them in the comments, but I never see them at the bank. So you can, you could critique or you can learn and follow what I'm, because this stuff will work. Like it works if you work it. And uh, I'll be breaking that down in future sessions. And if you want to be a part of those, again, future sessions, the rest of them are happening in our circle group. And if you go to tube1kchallenge.com, you can register and, and again, be a part of stuff like this. We just are going to go deeper every single day. But let's go to tip number three, which is start with simple videos that are easy to create. Start with simple videos that are easy to create. So the reason I want to share some of my story is... Let me be clear, where I started, I still had to improve. I mentioned that. I had to learn new skills. I had to get better. I don't think your dream of just filming in your car, or I don't think just filming in your car with a horrible angle is the uh, is like the key to long-term YouTube success. But what I want to encourage you is like starting with you what, with what you have. There's actually a channel called The Uneducated Economist. Dude is crushing. He uses his phone and he films in his car. He's got like tens of thousands of subs. He's been like featured in the media, but it's really wild. So you can you can keep things pretty simple. Um, but I do encourage people to get 1% better with every upload. Level up as you go. But start with simple videos that are easy to create. Keep it simple at the start. So what do I mean? Find like one simple question using the tool we were talking about, the YouTube search bar. Get clear on your topic. Don't worry about having a fancy camera. And get that video out there. 
Now we'll talk about what to include in the video over the next couple of sessions, but start with simple videos. And let me illustrate this because again, sometimes people think, oh, YouTube's crowded, different niches are saturated. And now I get it. Like I think about, for example, that I am in the YouTube education niche. Like not at first it was video and still is cameras, lighting. Cause again, I've been doing video for 20 years, YouTube for 17. So as I started helping people with YouTube, um, I realized, well, there's there's even a lot of people doing that. Is it still possible then to break out though? And is it still possible to use the ASQ strategy when what you might assume was that isn't every question already been answered? Well, let me dispel two myths. Number one, even if it has, you should still make the video. Because even if somebody's gotten like 10,000 views, 100,000 views, a million views, by you actually making videos people actually wanna watch, instead of you getting three views, you'll get 30 or you'll get 300. So like, I think you're, stop worrying about the competition. It's your race, your pace, post your video and, and, and start with simple videos. But the second insight is interesting because just two years ago, in a world where you would have thought a topic I found using our system would have been saturated or couldn't have been a big video or whatever, I did my research. I found a video. Now, you know that the Think Media team, or maybe you don't know, but as over the years, we've had different content creators at Think Media. We have new content creators joining the team. And so a couple of years ago, I find a video idea and I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, this is going to crush. I do my research. So I say in Slack, I say, hey, Nolan, make this video. Uh, here's a video idea for you. Because I'm spending a lot of time on our podcast channel. Nolan was making videos on our main channel, Think Media. And here's what the video was. It was how to turn on comments on YouTube. So let me let me go back to the title of what we name this. It's boring, but I guarantee it'll get you views. You want to talk about a boring video? Like how to turn on comments on YouTube is a boring video and a boring topic. All right. Now, the other thing that happens is you also go, pfft. That's so simple, I wouldn't have even searched YouTube for that. I would just go to Google. Well, okay, Jill, maybe that's what you would do, but ultimately 1.7 million people didn't just go to Google, they went to YouTube to type in that answer and to figure out the answer to that question. Remember, there's 2.6 billion people in the world, so if you are answering specific questions, you can have massive opportunity to get, again, get a lot of views. And, and let me be clear, I'm not saying you're gonna get a million views using the ASQ strategy, but what I wanna encourage you is that sometimes specific videos, specific questions that are simple and maybe even seem stupid, like, <laughs> why even make that? Well, 1.7 million views is a reason to make that. It's a very basic video. And look at the results one video could do. Like, I want you to imagine this, following this strategy, getting uncomfortable, punching fear in the face. You are one video away from growing your channel 7,500 subscribers. I mean, proof is on the screen that a singular video and a singular answer specific questions video could actually grow your channel 7,500 subscribers by itself. It also could earn $7,993 $7,933.12 just from YouTube ad revenue by itself. In fact, probably with watch time, 27, what is it? 4,000 hours of watch time. This, this, this one video would have got your channel monetized. Like a singular video could get your entire channel monetized. So answer specific questions is powerful and making simple videos is incredibly powerful. And I think it sometimes gets overlooked because it's maybe not sexy. It maybe seems too simple. It seems boring. And by the way, shout out to the sponsor of today's stream. Cause as we talk about this tip of like, start with simple videos that are easy to create. Um, the sponsor of today's video is StreamYard. And if you go to streamwiththink.com, you can get a 14 day trial of StreamYard. But here's one of the reasons why I love StreamYard is because it's so simple and easy to use. 
If you want to get started live streaming, or even if you want to use what they call local record to just set up a webcam, set up a USB mic and record videos, and then easily edit them. There's so many tools inside of StreamYard to sit in a situation. I'm a, it doesn't have to be as fancy as what I'm doing here, but like whether I'm bringing on Melissa, one of the ways I do a video podcast from the Pacific Northwest, and I can interview people from anywhere in the world is I use StreamYard. One of the ways I'm doing a training like this where I just share slides is again, StreamYard. I'm actually using StreamYard. So anyways, shout out to StreamYard. Uh, it doesn't just have to be used for live streaming. You can also make simple videos with it. There's tools inside of it to cut out vertical videos so that after you make a YouTube video, then you could go post it on Instagram and other places or YouTube shorts. So it's a really cool tool. Um, but the tip that I wanna emphasize here, right, is keep it simple and especially keep it simple at the start. Complexity is the enemy of execution. We can get fancy over time. Things will get more complex over time. Your YouTube business will get more complex over time as money starts coming in, as growth starts coming in, but keep it simple at the start. And one of, that's one of the reasons why we love StreamYard is it's so simple and easy to use. Streamwithink.com, grab your 14 day trial, link in the description or in the comments, wherever you're watching this. But again, let me encourage you, you are one video away. I want to always shoot straight with you. I We don't teach get rich quick at Think Media. We don't teach overnight success at Think Media. We teach that success takes hard work, investing in your skill, self and building skills. So when I say you're one video away, I don't mean your first video necessarily, although that could happen. You look at Marco, nine days, thousand subscribers, 15 days monetized. And I'll, actually, the order in which he did things was he really put together a plan by learning content like this and then executed on that plan. But let's say it's video 10 for you. What if it was video 33? What if it was video 57? That boom, oh my gosh, it got hundreds of thousands of views. It got my channel monetized. Now, all the work I've been, now people know me. Now people are seeing me. Like, it makes me think of Andrew Finney, who's a real estate agent, helping people make sense of real estate as his passion. Um, and he's a part of, uh, he's a United States Marine Corps vet, which by the way, if you, any, you or anyone in your family has served or is serving, I want to thank you. Like, uh, think media want to honor you and freedom's not free. And so sending massive love and respect to you, your family. Um, in fact, my grandfather, Lowell Reed was a part of the United States army air Corps, um, during world war II. So that was actually pre air force, but anyways, back to Andrew. So Andrew, Andrew is, um, if you look at his setup now, I want you to see that it got fancy, kind of like Ian, like the nice mic, better audio, a little subscribe button, roadcaster, all that stuff behind him, right? But here's where he started. Because our point is, I want you to start with simple videos and not overthink the production, not overthink anything. But the key is, is researching before you press record, come up with good topics. The key is also including good value in the video. Because here's what I love about this five-year-old video from Andrew. It's six questions to ask when buying a new construction home. It got 126,000 views, which is wild. But if you look at the video, like the audio is bad. I mean, again, the shot composition, one of the things that you should know about video is a good shot composition typically is gonna be your head's pretty close to the top of the screen, maybe even cut off a little bit. Like this is a pretty good shot right here. A lot of people film this way because they think their face should be centered. And it just, we call, I'd call this video, this, this real estate, you want to close this gap right here. Like, what is this? This is empty space. And so this is a little more pleasing, whatever. This is my point. Even though Andrew, I'm not putting it down. I love people who just punch fear in the face and start. You can get better over time. But even though he's, uh, just like my video, audio wasn't great, you know, Camera angle wasn't great. He's shooting on like a $22 baked potato camera or something. I don't know. It's really low quality. But 126,000 views, friends. 126,000 views. How? Using the answer specific question strategy. And so remember, it's also what you say in your videos and the value you give the viewer that matters more than how fancy they look. I'm not saying you can just go film like a low quality video on the way to work and like just waste people's time. I do want to encourage you. That's the key is what do you have value in? What can you add legitimate value? Answer the question in a way that the person walks away with something like, Oh, wow, this is actually something worth writing down. 
Success on YouTube is essentially making a promise in the title of your video and then delivering on that promise in the video. So what did Andrew do and why were people happy? They weren't here judging the lighting, right? They were here because they wanted to know the six questions to ask when buying a new construction home, which finding topics like that is partly done from using tools like the YouTube search bar to find like, oh, people want to know what they should ask or they want tips for buying a new construction home. So you also can see, by the way, that we flush out the idea that sometimes you use the search, the YouTube search bar. It's kind of like level one. Then you start flushing it out like, oh, okay, new construction home. What could be, oh, tips for buying a new. So some, it, it takes, it also takes kind of intuition and psychology, which will walk you through over the um, coming days on top of like using the tools. Like there, this was, it did not come up in the YouTube search bar that said six questions to ask when buying a new construction home. Like that didn't show up. You then took the intent of things viewers were looking for and crafted a video, but then boom. Who cares about the production value being low? It was the value in the video. And here's kind of a cool, this is using a software tool that review reveals what's called VPH. And so write this down. If you install this, you can spy on other people's channels and see it. But um, what does VPH stand for? It stands for views per hour. Now here's what's wild. Is Andrew, without a great camera, with his face centered in the shot, Without the, he wasn't comfortable on camera at the time either. He is now, wasn't then, but he started before he was ready. Is he posted this video, six questions to ask when buying a new construction home. And now six years later, it's still getting 0.7 VPH. What is VPH? Views per hour. So six years later, if we do the math, 0.7 times 24, then that's 16.8 views a day. Now times 365, that is 6,132 views a year. And remember, this was his early days. His videos have improved, but also what would happen if you had 10 videos doing that? What would happen if you had 100 videos doing that? If you had 100 ASQ videos that were all generating 6,000 views a year, just multiplied and camp compounding and growing and growing your channel. It'd be pretty powerful, right? Tip number four, write catchy titles that will make the viewer want to click. This is really important in 2024 is we're not living in an era where you just like go to the YouTube search bar or use a tool like also ask.com or answer the public.com. You want to write catchy, catchy titles that make the viewer want to click. So meet Larry. So Larry is a chartered financial an analyst. He faced a lot of challenges in his journey. And for several years, he struggled with comparing himself to others. And he originally failed the level three CFA exam, which caused him to get passed up for promotion to his job. So it's really kind of like a closed door. And it was very discouraging and very frustrating. But sometimes our greatest disappointments can be our biggest setups for our future success. Because it really caused him to just rethink things. And one of the things he realized was that he wanted to get into this creator economy thing. And so through perseverance and growing his confidence and developing the right mindset, mindset, plus through like really learning new skills, he stepped out as an entrepreneur and ultimately a content creator. And he posted his first video. And I hope you can see what I see. It wasn't fancy. It's just like in his office, just like the lighting in the room. Like nothing fancy about the production or anything, but here's what's wild is again, we're talking about the ASQ strategy is that after six months, he grew 53,000 subscribers, 900,000 views, and he only posted 13 videos. But we're not just talking about research before you press record and find a good topic. We also are talking about tip number four is you want to write catchy titles. So like one of the videos he did, is it possible to live off dividends? Oh, he's answering a question. Remember, answer specific questions. And it's two years old, it got 100,000 views, but here's kind of an example of a catchy title. So best inflation socks, stocks. My mega plan to profit from inflation and secure the bag as a CFA. So you are gonna take the topics that you research, but you wanna develop the skill of writing catchy titles speaking to humans. And notice this has 1.2 million views. 
So it, it, the, why you could title the video like, what? are the best inflation stocks. And that's the research tool might lead you to that. My advice is that you're going to research before you press record and find topics, but then you want to develop the skill of turning that topic into a catchy title. Do you see how powerful that could be? And 86% of US viewers say they often use YouTube to learn new things. And so that's what he, he was taking his CFA background, his financial background, he brought it on YouTube learn new skills. And after using this strategy over and over, right? And posting videos on his channel, he eventually crossed 100,000 subscribers, answering specific questions, helping his viewers learn new things, helping his viewers solve a problem. And side note on the topic of titles, um, we actually have a resource called our 15 best YouTube title formulas for getting views. And so if you're interested in that, it's a part of our uh, starter kit. And it's, it's kind of cool because they're like power. We've tested not just on our own thousands of videos we've posted, but across multiple channels, some of the best formulas for writing catchy titles. We have a super low uh, price on our tubestarterkit.com. If you're interested, maybe you already picked it up, but that's just one of many things in that that you can check out as well. But here's the fact. Just one ASQ video can help your channel get thousands of subscribers and can make you thousands of dollars. And so... Uh, one of the videos I did best copyright free music here five years ago. All right. It's five years old answering a specific question. The question would be, what is the best copyright free music for YouTube? But I, I, I'm giving you different angles to help you flush out this strategy that, that you got to craft that. Like if you just type in best copyright free music and, and, and named a four word title, it's not a great title. Like you want your title to be a little more flushed out. Fair enough. But here's what's crazy. One video. You're one video away. This one video has grown my channel, Think Media, 55,000 subscribers. This one video, I promised you this at the beginning, has earned me $38,628. I know that seems nuts. And I also want to encourage you. You're like, Sean, I mean, easy for you to save and use doing YouTube for 17 years. Okay, great. Well, let's just say you got 10% of those results. It means one ASQ video could grow your channel 5,000 subs and earn you $3,800. This, I, I, I'm not trying to paint a pie in the sky picture here. This is more practical than, why did two filters say 200 million people are earning money from digital content creation? And why did Goldman Sachs research say that the creator economy is going to double in the next three years? Because this is real. And because how, think about all the questions and subcategories and niches and hobbies and movies and shows and series and businesses and games in the world. All these very specific things that when you hone in your niche, you start making the right videos, you start researching before you press record, you learn the art form of writing catchy titles. And here's what's also interesting about using this strategy is this is Stacey Tuchel. She made a video on how to get in front of your customers and make more sales. It only got 15,000 views. But the mistake people make, because the example I just showed you is like, millions of views and 55,000 subscribers. And yeah, I made $38,000 from YouTube ad revenue. But this is why the fifth session of the challenge is so important is because the business model you're in is more important than the amount of views that you get. So too many people are judging YouTube success by vanity metrics. If you're just trying to be YouTube famous, then vanity, then you're living a vanity metrics life. You are like, I am dependent upon the YouTube algorithm and upon a lot of views. But where Stacy could sit here and someone might say, oh, Stacy, you only got 15,000 views. Your YouTube channel's not doing that good. She could reply and say, I see you in the comments, but I never see you at the bank because she has a multi-million dollar per year business. Why? She helps people with operations, well-oiled operations, all this different stuff. Her 15,000 views are more valuable than 15,000 views on some cat videos, right? On a TikTok compilation, because it's who is watching the video. So when I talk about the ASQ strategy, let's, let's clarify our dream goal here. A thousand subscribers or more or millions of views is actually solving for the wrong thing. The better first question to ask is what business are you in? What is your monetization strategy is going to be? 
And is it about getting as many views and looking at the wrong camera with my back to you for a long time? Um, is it about as getting as many views as possible or the right views from the right people aligned with the right business plan for your YouTube channel? So ASQ, it's not like, I'm not, not, let, me, let me not just get you guaranteed views. Let's also help you figure out the best ways to make money if you have a small channel and you're not getting a lot of views. So practically, as we land the plane, what is a specific question you could answer on your YouTube channel? What's a specific question you could answer on your YouTube channel or a specific problem you could make? Remember, 70% of viewers use YouTube to help them solve a problem, but we got to hit tip number five. And tip number five is this, know your goals and get clear on why you want to grow your channel. Having clear goals is important. By the way, if your goal is just, I want a million views, fine, but what would you rather have? A million views or a million dollar business? What would you rather have? A practical channel with a small audience, but a dedicated audience and being able to support your family and make a living and have a sustainable channel and a sustainable model and have peace? Or would you rather just chase trends and chase virality? Listen, I actually don't want to cast any judgment on your goals. I want to challenge you to think deeply about the bigger picture of what is it you're actually trying to achieve? Why is it do you want to be on YouTube? What is it you hope to accomplish with YouTube? And are you open-minded to not just applying what you're learning in this session, but to staying committed to the next four sessions of the challenge where we're going to flush this out? A lot of what we teach at Think Media is different than what other people teach. But there's also a reason why we have more success students than other people have. Because we approach YouTube differently. And one of the keys to that, that we have discovered is this fifth tip is you gotta know your goals and you gotta get clear on the why you wanna grow your channel. So let me ask you, what? why do you wanna succeed on YouTube? What are your goals with YouTube? Is it dream houses, better vacations? Is it significant in legacy? Is it also like maybe you want to help people learn a particular thing or raise money for a particular cause? Um, something that you can't keep silent about, something that you just can't not talk about. You know, when I think about why I want to do YouTube and how kind of this whole thing started, um, I got to take you back to 2009, which was the scariest year of my life because I was the year my wife almost died. And in 2000, a few years earlier, my wife had gotten very sick on a mission trip to the Philippines, started losing a bunch of weight, was throwing up 10 to 15 times a day. Doctors were saying, just eat a burger, you know, stop being, stop, stop your eating disorder. But it wasn't an eating disorder. It was actually a chronic illness that doctors, multiple doctors couldn't discover for the first couple of years. So eventually my wife's weight got so low that she had to have a feeding tube first in her nose to stabilize her weight because she got to 82 pounds. And then eventually they installed it J. Junum. Well, it was a botched procedure, botched surgery. And so it was, this is where they put it in your intestine. But instead of the liquid food going into her intestine, it started to fill up her body cavity, which will suffocate your organs and kill you quick. And so we had a rush to the hospital and I found myself in the hospital by my wife's side for six days, asking a lot of deep questions and being under a ton of stress and worry. And I'll never forget because while I was in the hospital, I was first like, God, why is this happening? But then I was like, what am I going to do? And I'll never forget. I really felt challenged. Like there was a why in the, in the road in my life. Like I had a choice based on the hard circumstances I was going through at the time. Like, do I get bitter and get discouraged and think, what was me? And I had a lot of reasons to think that because it wasn't actually just that my wife was now in the hospital, but we had actually just gone through the big short, the housing market crash, and we were losing our home. And then we had also just gone through, I told you I started working at a church. Well, there was a moral failure in leadership and some people stole some money and got weird. And that whole thing was falling apart too. So people we trusted had really kind of betrayed us and let us down. We were losing our home. My wife was actually the main breadwinner and she wasn't working now because of her health uh, situation. So we're in financial hardship, losing our home in the hospital for six days. I don't know if you could kind of feel the stress, but like it was dark. Like this was a really, really tough time. And I just remember just being like, man, am I just going to cave and give in to the weight of all this pressure or... And I really felt challenged by God at that time. 
to just say, man, you got to man up. You got to step up and fight for your family and fight for your faith and push through this thing. Like you're facing not just a giant, but multiple giants, Sean, but this is your time to rise up in faith and push through. And it wasn't easy, but that was literally what I was praying through and processing in the hospital room. And what was crazy though, is I had a lot of days to think and reflect like, man, what am I going to do? And it was during that time that for me, I started to formulate one, I had already been on YouTube. So I already for about three years and I've been studying YouTube and some different monetization strategies that we'll be covering. And I've been doing video. So I started to kind of look at like, like there's a biblical story of like Moses where uh, God says, what's in your hand? God asked Moses, like, what's in your hand? And it was kind of like, what was in my hand? Like a video camera, some YouTube experience, some video production experience, and a why. What's your why? What is it you're fighting for? What is it you want to accomplish on YouTube? What is it that you, because out of that then, it lit a spark in me where I didn't just start trying to go home after work and edit and shoot and learn and study. It lit a fire that hasn't stopped since then. Fighting for my family, continuing to push, continuing to grow. And, and, and that's why number five is people know their goals and they know their why, is I've actually discovered that a common denominator of those that are successful on YouTube is a strong inner motivation connected to a strong why, like a strong reason. I've actually learned that reasons come first, results come second. See, some people casually want success on YouTube, but I actually believe that if you have a casual approach to anything in life, you'll never get results. But if you are committed to your goals, that's where results come from. Commitment is the foundation of all great accomplishments. And at that moment, I got committed. And I was like, I'm going to figure this thing out. I still worked at another job. We eventually moved to Vegas. And I worked at a salary job at a church so I could have health care. Because you still got to take care of your day to day. But it was at that moment that I was like, man, I'm all in. I'm going to do this thing until I, I'm going to keep learning, keep studying. I'm going to really figure out how to do the search-based content, what we call ranked videos and all this stuff. I'm just going to push. Why? My family. I got medical bills, man. Plus, I don't know if my wife, I don't know what the future holds. Like, what if we want to have kids someday? Like, maybe I'll need to be able to hire a nanny or something or help. Like, what's it going to be like dealing with a chronic illness and some different things? And I won't go into the whole story, but as we eventually kind of figure out what it is, and she now has like a device inside that's helpful, it's been a wild journey. But let me ask you, what is your why for wanting to start YouTube? And Ultimately, one of the big lessons I learned during this season was that reasons come first, results come second. And so I want to encourage you as we do this first session of our challenge that this is worth journaling about. Write down your reasons. And I want to encourage you to write them all down. I think there's a lot of good motivating reasons. Like you might be like, want better car uh, or want a car. Like I don't care. It could be like a Dave Ramsey mobile, man. 500 bucks. Like I just want like... It might be like car, um, you know, house, like vacation, save up some money for kids, retire my husband, you know, some different things. But then what are some of the other reasons? Reasons come first, results come second. I started, you know, my family, like fighting for our future. I wanted autonomy. Like my ultimate reason for wanting to succeed on YouTube wasn't to have some kind of like laptop lifestyle so I could drink a pina colada with a laptop at some resort next to the pool, which by the way, why would you ever want to have a laptop by the pool? Like you'd see those pictures. I was like, bro, bro, the th uh, thing's going to overheat. I'm going to probably like spill water on it. Like, you know what I mean? Like for me, like I loved the appeal of YouTube so that I could work from home so that I had flexibility so that we could eventually make some money, maybe good money to cover whatever expenses may come our way, to give our family freedom. You start getting fired up by things like freedom, like legacy. Those are the creators that I've found become unstoppable. What are your reasons? And if we fast forward to today, what is kind of wild is, you know, doctors told us we wouldn't be able to have kids. We found out uh, eventually that my wife has gastroparesis. So she has what's called a gastric stimulator. So through prayer and through medical treatments and through a lot of ups and downs, it's been wild to see. But now I think back, it's 2014 to 2010 in that hospital room. 
And I think back to being there and seeing that fork in the road in the hospital room. Man, do I just give in? Do I let despair take me under? I don't know what you're going through right now, but I know that the economy and division and culture being more divided and families being split apart over dumb stuff and politics just being insane and it's election year, a lot of places around the world and there's just a lot of stress and a lot of things weighing on us and a lot of, just a lot of discouragement out there. I do want to challenge you and I hope that during this challenge that like, this is that you get a new fire to keep fighting because I'm glad that I got clear on my reasons and decided to start and not quit. I'm glad that I decided to take the path, man. I'm going to step up. I'm going to man up. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And now I look back over 14 years and it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't just like, and it was up the whole time. I mean, ups, downs, challenges, and challenging our marriage, challenge, fighting, working through stuff, challenges in careers and whatnot, all, all sorts of things, you know, but, but we stuck together and, and now I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, from that horrible video of not being energetic or being entertaining to now things being like crispy now having like a nicer camera for sure, you know, and having some of the best gear and working with Sony and working with Canon. I, I now think as I look at the think media team, there's a picture of our last team retreat of how many people now are employed and actually work at think media because I decided to fight. What are you going to fight for? What are you fighting for? I'm not saying, by the way, you have to build some kind of big team and there's a big opportunity to be a solo creator. But I think about our team. I think about the lives. I think about their kids. I think about these families. I think about what was waiting on the other side. And I think about our students. And I think about people that have used like what we've pioneered at Think Media for their causes and their reasons and the things they were fighting for. Which leads me to one final question for you, friend, and it's this. Who is waiting for you to show up and take your goals seriously? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Again, not everybody has to do YouTube. That's your choice. If you feel called to this, if you want to go for this. But I really actually do believe that God weaves purpose into our DNA and that we, we have giftings and callings that are meant to be shared and impact the world. And I really do believe, maybe it's not YouTube, but it's something that there is people waiting for you on the other side of punching fear in the face and being courageous. Like who's waiting for you to show up and take your goals seriously? Your family, your kids, your neighbors, people on the internet. Not everyone's going to have a million subscribers, but what about 5,000, 10,000 subscribers of people you could help entertain, educate, and help, you know? And how many dreams or goals get buried because we give up too soon or because we don't step out or because we take some notes, but we don't actually press record. I want to challenge you. If you have a reason that's bigger than you, it started for me paying off medical bills. It started off, you know, uh, fighting for my family, of course. But our company mission is to help 1 million purpose-driven people create a full-time living doing what they love while making a difference in the world with YouTube. So who's waiting for us? Are you part of that 1 million? We want to help 1 million people create a full-time living, purpose-driven people. One of the things we say at Think Media is our success is when our students' success have students' success. That's, we don't, we don't, I spotch that kind of, but I think maybe you get, like, we are educators that help purpose-driven people like you get your message to the world. And so we want you to impact people with that thing. It could be about health. It could be about relationships. It could be about real estate. It could be about money, finance. It could be about entertaining, comedy. It could be about all these things. We don't want you to quit. We don't want you to bury your talents. Who is waiting for you to show up and take your goals seriously? So here's what we learned today. Uh, YouTube is healthy and growing. We saw the data. We saw the facts supporting that. Use the ASQ method. The ASQ method is answer specific questions that'll help you get a thousand subscribers and beyond. Start with simple videos that are easier to create. We can get complex later. We can get fancier later. We can get a fancier camera later. But I want to encourage you to start messy, start before you're ready, but start with the ASQ method, adding value with simple videos. And 
don't miss this one. I want to encourage you to write down your goals and the reasons you want to succeed on YouTube. It's a difference maker. People who are casual towards YouTube fall off pretty quick. But people who are committed have strong reasons, clear goals. And I've learned this, that commitment is the foundation of all great accomplishments. And so um, that's our first session of our five-day challenge. If you've enjoyed this and you love the quick tip earlier on or the main session, we have four more days of this. So we have four more quick tips, four more full sessions. The rest of it, though, is happening in our circle group. If you go to tube1kchallenge.com, you can register. There's a link in the description as well. And every single day, you're going to learn something. But we're also going to ask you to do something. And so that's why we have our daily challenge.